Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami in Japan. This earthquake was the most powerful earthquake to hit Japan in living memory. It was one of the five most powerful earthquakes ever to have struck the world. Japan is very prone to earthquakes. The Eurasian, Filipino and North American plates all meet off of ja Japan's southern coastline. Japan has a history of major earthquakes, such as the Great Kanto Earthquake in 1923 and the Kobe Earthquake in 1995. As I mentioned before, Japan is located on a very complex plate boundary. Numerous plates meet directly underneath the islands. And because of this, in 2011, there was a slip fort releasing huge amounts of energy. What occurred was that the Pacific Oceanic Plate was being subducted underneath the Continental Plate. And as it was being subducted, the friction built up between the two, slipping and releasing huge amounts of energy. As a quick overview of the earthquake, it was approximately 8.9 on the Richter scale. It was 129 kilometers away from Sendai, Japan, 177 kilometers away from Fukushima and Yamagata, and 373 kilometers away from Tokyo. It was particularly devastating because the focus of the earthquake was very shallow. It was only at a depth of 32 kilometers. The subsequent tsunami that occurred was huge and measured approximately 14 meters in height. It hit the coast of Honshu and flooded many areas of Japan. In this slide it's very clear to see how prone Japan is to earthquakes. Numerous earthquakes occur every year off of the coast. And if you look carefully, you can see the 8.9 Richter scale earthquake that occurred on the 11th of March. The tsunami occurred because the subducting plate um, that is being pushed underneath the continental plate became stuck. And as it became stuck, the continental plate slowly became distorted. When this force reached a critical level, the stuck area ruptures, releasing the energy of the earthquake. And then that land pushes upwards, creating the wave and the tsunami spreads away from that area. If a tsunami occurs in deep water, it's highly unlikely that anybody will be able to see it or notice it, even if you're on a boat directly underneath it. However, when the wave enters shallow water, it slows down and its amplitude increases. And it's this that causes that huge wave that spreads onto the coast. The 2011 Tohoku quake lifted the seafloor by about 10 meters over an area approximately the size of Connecticut. The vertical displacement of seawater was the cause of the tsunami and that expanded away from the earthquake site. At the bottom of this diagram, you can see uh, the extent of the spreading at about half a minute after the earthquake, all the way up to 24 and a half minutes after the earthquake, where the tsunami wave managed to come into contact with the coast. 
There was therefore very little warning for anybody on the coast of Japan to be able to react to this tsunami. The impact of this tsunami was felt throughout the whole Pacific Ocean. You can see that um, just off the coast of Japan, where the earthquake actually occurred, the wave height exceeded 2.5 meters, and then it declines gradually over the whole Pacific Ocean, um, but it still is quite considerable, hitting the coast of California, New Guinea, and some of the islands in the Pacific Ocean as well. Tsunami waves travel at incredible speeds. You can see on this diagram that it hit the coast of California between 9 and 12 hours after the actual earthquake. And it even came into contact with the coast of South America about 21 hours after the event. The social effects of this earthquake were devastating. It was a humanitarian disaster, with just over 15,000 people dying, 6,000 plus people being injured, and 2,500 people missing. The region most directly affected by the earthquake and tsunami was relatively sparsely populated, otherwise it could have been much worse. Hundreds of thousands of people were made homeless, there was loss of property and damage to personal possessions. It is estimated that a quarter of a million people were temporarily forced into emergency shelters. In addition to that, food, water and fuel were in very short supply. People were unable to go to their work. Much of the country experienced rolling blackouts due to the loss of electricity from the damaged nuclear power plants. There are also abnormal radiation levels reported in tap water, vegetables, milk, and there was a large concern that many of the fish stocks off the coast were also affected. There was a temporary ban imposed on shipments of milk, spinach, and kakina, uh, which is a leafy vegetable that's produced in that region. The social effects were compounded by the fact that many government officials and local community leaders were missing. Also, town halls were destroyed, and just to rebuild after such a grand scale disaster is extremely hard. Many people struggled to envisage a future for their towns. Japan also experienced huge economic implications due to this. It is estimated that the economic damage is somewhere in the region of about 16 to 25 trillion yen. That's approximately 316 billion dollars. Many companies were forced to shut down, and very famous industrial productions such as Sony, Toyota, and other companies also had issues. When the explosion happened at Fukushima, many people were concerned about rebuilding another power plant in the earthquake zone because of the risk of a future disaster occurring. There was even problems with the value of the currency and the uh, Japanese yen plummeted due to speculation. Furthermore, in the insurance industry was very heavily hit due to the cost of the disaster. The loss of two nuclear power plants meant that the Tokyo region faced a summer where there was a, a lack of capacity of electricity. The tsunami also closed down key ports and export sites. Many airports also had to close down. It is important to remember that a disaster on such a magnitude doesn't only cause social and economic problems, but it can also impact the environment greatly. Some of the environmental effects include contamination of the drinking water and also the environment in general. The radioactive material that escaped from the Fukushima nuclear power station will have contaminated various creatures in the sea and on land, will have also polluted vegetation and generally got into the food cycle and can cause uh, a compounded effect with each animal that consumes a polluted uh, animal or plant. There are also many fires that were caused and there was a general loss of wildlife due to the wave and also due to the um, earthquake itself. Obviously, the main environmental impact occurred due to the nuclear reactor being damaged at Fukushima. 
the Fukushima nuclear power plant is made up of six different reactors. And prior to the earthquake, reactors 4, 5 and 6 had been shut down for maintenance. The remaining reactors were shut down automatically as a safety precaution due to the earthquake. However, the subsequent 14 meter tsunami flooded the reactors. This took out the backup generators that run the water pumps to keep the reactors cool. It was an unfortunate series of events, and this occurrence meant that the safeguards that were in place were not sufficient to be able to deal with the huge earthquake and tsunami at the same time. These photos clearly show the explosion and the subsequent radioactive cloud that was issued after the damage that occurred to the Fukushima nuclear power station. When looking at a case study like this, it's important to understand the sheer extent of what occurred. There is no country more prepared for earthquakes than Japan in the world. However, in the end, it all comes down to magnitude. No country in the world with our current levels of technology can deal with an earthquake of the size of the one that hit Japan in 2011. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and please also subscribe to the channel for more updates.